All right, so we have Griffith's electrodynamics, problem 2.39. We have two spherical cavities of radii A and B. I just have a cute little guy here, but um, it won't look like much in a moment because we'll draw in the radii of A and B. Okay, they're hollowed out from the interior of a neutral conducting sphere of radius big R, so from the center of this. The outside is uh, big R. At the center of each cavity, a point charge is placed. We call these charges QA and QB. So tiny writing, but that's a QA and a QB. All right. Find the surface charge densities at A. So this is the first part, part A. All right, so uh, sigma A, all right. So um, basically we have a similar, com similar circumstance. If we look at each of these individually, we have something sort of similar to problem 2.38, where we just have now the, the sphere of charges is just a point charge in the middle and surrounded by a conductor. And if there is any field, then the, which there is from this point charge, the charges inside the conductor will move to cancel it because the electric field inside the conductor is going to be zero. So, um, similar situation to 2.38, but we have a uh, this charge QA, and then um, so we're looking at the surface charge densities. All right, the surface charge density is going to be opposite to that to cancel it out, and then we have the uh, four pi over and, and multiplied by the surface area of this inner cavity. So 4 pi a squared, all right? Okay, so, and same thing goes for sigma b. There's nothing special about one or the other. We get, we just change the labels a to b. So this time q sub b, 4 pi b squared. All right, now we look at sigma big R. Okay, so now we just, uh, we're looking at the inside of this outer surface out here. And uh, because each of these, right, each of the, anyway, the electric field inside this conductor is zero. So there's no way of knowing what Basically, this outside cannot see what's going on inside here. There's this no man's land, zero electric field in, in here. So there's no information being conveyed through this no man's land. The electric field is zero, right? These charges are completely shielded, all right? But there is one piece of information that's conveyed, I guess, and that is how much charge did it take to, the, did we have to pull out of this conductor to shield these two uh, charges QA and QB. That's because that's the one thing we have left over. So left over we have, right, we put a minus QA uh, on this surface and a minus QB on this surface. So we have extra positive charge if, if QA and QB are positive. They don't have to be either. But uh, we have extra extra charge on this conductor and again, the electric field in here is zero, so it doesn't know like any sp special place to go. Um, all it's all it knows is I have this surface, I have a certain amount of extra charge. It's going to spread itself uniformly around this surface. So, um, and it's just equal to the total charge in here. So Q A plus Q B. All right, and then we have 
the surface area that it's equally evenly spreading itself over for pi r big r. So this is a big R squared. Okay. All right. So the only information that gets from this inside part to this outer surface is how much charge is inside these two. All right. Okay. So part B. What is the field outside the conductor? Well, um, just like in problem 2.38, when we have a symmetric, uh, uh, an even, uh, evenly spaced, uniform charge density, surface density, right, on, on a sphere, outside here, it will look just like a point charge. So uh, the electric field will just be that of a point charge, so outside the conductor we'll have a 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. All right, and then right here, and then this is going to be in the r hat direction, and right here we need to know how much charge is inside, or how much charge is there, um, if you were to draw a Gaussian surface, say, okay. Um, and it's just QA plus QB. All right, again, it's distributed kind of weirdly because you have QA and QB, but then you have a minus QA and a minus QB on the inner surfaces of these cavities, but then you have another QA plus QB on the outside. So adding it all together, we get a QA plus QB. And here's the electric field that we get on the outside, which is the same as a point charge of, of charge QA plus Q. What is the field within each cavity? Okay, inside each, each of these cavities, what is the field? Well, um, just by Gauss's law, it's not affected by anything, um, well, and due to, to the symmetry and everything, right? All we have is, uh, this positive charge in here and then a minus charge evenly distributed around it. So there's there's no extra terms from external fields that we have to, to add in, which I guess we'll talk about more in part D or uh, part E. Um, but the only field in here will be that of the point charge. It just ends at this outer surface because there's charge out there to cancel it out. So the only field in, inside these two cavities will be that of the point charges. So the E field inside cavity A would be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And the only charge inside cavity A is QA. And then we'll call this uh, little r sub A. All right, because it, um, when we did this, uh, the E field for the outside, we were talking about from the center of this spherical conductor right here. But when you're looking at the point charge of just the inside here, the origin uh, will be at the point charge. It's the center of the, of the symmetry. So um, the distance from this center is what we're calling RA, and it will be in the radial RA direction. So radiating out from this uh, charge QA, right? That's why we have to have these subscripts on, subscripts on here because we have a different origin now. And it'll be the exact same form for B, four pi epsilon naught. If we have a QB and now we're looking at the distance squared from the QB charge, okay? And also the direction is radial from the QB charge, okay? All right, so D, what is the force on QA and QB? Well, the only field, right, so the force on a charge 
is equal to that charge. I, I mean, I guess the force on a charge only due to uh, electrostatic um, effects is, we'll just write it equals uh, that charge multiplied by the electric field at that point. And from the perspective of these charges, right, the E field in here is only the E field from uh, those charges. So to them, they might as well be in infinite empty space. There's nothing outside of them that would exert a force. And Griffiths in the book somewhere, he talks about like, you, 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 it's not gonna exert a force on itself any more than, you know, you can lift yourself up by standing in a bucket or a basket and pulling up on the handles. So um, since the only electric field at that point is the electric field from them, right? Well, I guess it's, anyway, throwing direct delta functions and whatnot, but anyway, the only field inside the cavity is their electric field. No external fields that they know. The force on A and the force on B are both going to equal zero. All right, so party says, which of these answers would change if a third charge, QC, were brought near the conductor? Okay, so now what we're gonna say is we have a charge out here, right? So basically what we're saying is we're putting this thing into an external electric field. Right, I mean, I guess the field lines would bend in so they're perpendicular to the conductor at all locations, right? But basically we have, now our little guy has a beard, I guess, or, or something, but now we have a um, uh, an external field. So uh, what is going to change? Well, like we said, inside here is no man's land. Um, the only thing that, the only information that gets, you know, in and out is how much charge is on the inside. Um, so this uh, external field, it's not changing the amount of charge on the outside. It's only changing how it's distributed, you know. So maybe um, in order to balance out, this will, n this will not be a perfectly uniform surface charge density anymore on the very outside. But again, no E in here and no information as long as you're not tweaking the charge, the only inform there's no information getting to these guys. So this guy will stay the same, the surface charge density of the, the surface at, at A and at B, this guy will st also stay the same. But this guy here will change, okay? So I'll just put an X by him, right? Um, because there's an external field now. So, like we said, it's not a uniform surface charge density anymore. All right. Uh, what about part B? Well, um, the um, same sort of thing applies. We have these three different fields, right? Um, this one is going to change because now this thing's not alone in the universe. Now there's something else, you know, creating a field that adds in with um, the field from this one. All right, so the electric field in here, you have to take it into account. This is a field that we had before, but now you have to take into account this other field here. All right. <coughs> um, but these fields inside, again, we say it a million times, the E field inside the conductor is zero, and this the information about this charge out here is not gonna get through, all right? Um, so we, uh, so these, these electric fields inside are not going to change. 
And if you're not changing the electric field, then you're not changing the force. So the, the parts that change would be the surface charge density on the outer surface here at big R, and also this 